on a snowy evening 2008 in Paris there was a young man by the name of Travis Kalanick Travis Kalanick had a friend by the name of Garrett both of them were partying they walked out on the snowy evening they had trouble getting a cab they had so much of an issue eventually both of them sat together came up with a simple idea how good it will be if I just tap a button on my phone and have a cab and a ride what started as a simple app for premier black uh, 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 cars in the metropolitan area of Paris uh, today is a logistical uh, 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 amazement around the world I'm talking about uber taxis two men trouble because of uh, you know the lack of uh, 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 the transportation something shifted in their heart uh, and today many of you have the uber app uh, uh, on your phone in fact you came this morning with uber in Paris but here we are enjoying across the nations of the world today it's a billion dollar amen company all started just eight years back because two men were willing to step beyond the norm and do something in our text that we are going to read this morning here's a man by the name of Caleb Caleb is a man who has a spirit what I want to minister this morning he had a pioneering spirit a vision for what could be he took that with him he stepped into what was intended to be and how many of you know this morning church God has spoken some things which are things that which are not the things that could be but God has spoken things to you and I which are meant to be that are intended to be and if we are going to reach our nation if we are going to reach niche regions beyond we need this spirit amen numbers chapter 13 amen one portion of scripture and then we'll move to another one numbers 13 verse number 30 then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it let's pray father we thank you this morning for all that you've done this week God we appreciate God that you are moving in the nation of India and the nations represented here God there is still a lot of work to be done we are absolutely aware of that but I ask you Lord this morning that you would Lord stir up God the same spirit that we see in Caleb and in our forefathers God give us men give us couples give us churches God that will possess this spirit because there is much land to be taken for you in Jesus name and everyone said amen I want to preach a sermon I've titled a pioneer spirit how many of you know church if we are going to reach our nation we need that spirit how many of you can say amen numbers chapter 14 verse number 24 if you turn, turn there with me but my servant Caleb because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully I will bring into the land where he and his descendants amen shall inherit it every believer here listen to me this morning you and I need this spirit this spirit of pioneering is not fixed to a certain group of people certain language group every individual here God expects us to have this spirit I was sitting down and I was thinking about it amen we have a number of churches in the nation of India almost 22 churches right now but only a handful have ever pioneered 
Many pastors here, you've taken over a work. I, if I'm counting, probably five to six people have only pioneered a work. A vast majority, probably for the need, have been taken over from missionaries that have pioneered. But how many of you know, amen, we need, amen, locals to raise up and pioneer the work in the nation. There is a need for this spirit, uh, amen, to be uh, prevalent uh, in this uh, hour that we live in. Firstly, I want to say on the history of pioneering. The word pioneer means the first one to explore, settle in a new country or a new area. The word pioneer also has the meaning of a settler, a colonist or a frontier man, a frontier woman, an explorer, or they would say a trailblazer. Because society this morning is filled with entrepreneurs. Just like what I told about, uh, amen, Travis Kalanick, uh, entrepreneurs who go against the norm. They say you need to have certain degrees. You need to have certain qualities for business. But isn't it so amazing? Sometimes the best businesses are people who are not the educated, but those that step beyond the box and do something about it. Listen, church, there are people here tonight. You don't need to come from a certain language, people group, and this, that, the other to reach our nation. You need to step outside the box, amen, and get a vision for the nation. We need spiritual entrepreneurs this morning. People that will rise up. Here, these are entrepreneurs who are doing multi-million dollar success in life. Pioneering is the first people who are setting the course for the future. We are just a very young fellowship. We've heard this many times. But what we set this year and the next few years and what has been done is going to set the course for the future if God would tarry. How many of you know church? The Bible is full of pioneers. Did you know the Bible is a book of pioneering? You'll be interested. Amen. Pioneers are forced to trust in God. Can I tell you this is a generation where we don't want to trust in anybody. Ask someone, amen. I've pioneered before in 2008. Pioneers are people who trust and rely on God. What he has promised. Abraham, Pastor Campbell, so, amen, masterfully preached last night. Amen. He was instructed by God to leave everything. To leave his family. To leave his home. The familiar. To the land that God shows. Many of us, we want to know the will of God. Anyone here tonight, you've wrestled, Lord, what's your will for my life? We want to know the will of God for our lives. Uh, no doubt, God says to Abraham, Abraham, pack your bags and go. And where you stop, I'll tell you where to stop. That's my will for you. I mean, if you would go, your pastor says, are you ready to go? Where, pastor? Go, I'll tell you where. Just pack up and go. And when I tell you stop, stop. That's the place you're pioneering. That's Abraham right there. Today, we need to know everything. Pioneering requires you to trust God in Him and nothing else. We may have a form of religion. India is filled with religion. Listen, religion will not help us to pioneer. Just by knowing God. Remember, Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship with God. Joseph, how many of you know, pioneered Egypt? Slavery. Eventually goes on to be, in, you know, second in line. We've heard even this week. But then he gets falsely accused. He's in the prison, meets a man who takes him to the Pharaoh. And then allows the whole nation of Israel to come in. He's forced to rely on trust in God. Listen, I love what the Bible says about Joseph. God gave him favor. Listen to me, when you step out to pioneer a new work for God or any area, you will find the favor of God. Every side, especially in the business aspect, we see Joseph, uh, amen, finding favor. Joshua, how many of you know he pioneered in the Bible? He's leading the people to the promised land, a new territory. What God has promised, uh, he's leading them into different places, cities they've never been through, uh, conquering nations by themselves uh, were impossible. Uh, 
Because listen to me, pioneering is going into an unknown land, totally relying on God's help to conquer that place. Last night, amen, what did you see about the video? Wow, wow that, that video was good, sleek. Where did you get that photo? You missed it all. Because that, that video, amen, the, and the things that you saw is so that there are people here that you would catch the spirit, uh, amen, that we ought to be going into the unknown places, uh, amen, completely relying on God. Now listen, I want to also minister here. Because when we think about pioneering, we always think it's about a new church. How many of you know pioneering could be a new area in your prayer life? Because we can just think pioneering means church only. What about pioneering means a new ministry within your congregation that God has given a talent? How many of you know God has given you talents? Indians are talented people. Asians are talented people. How many of you can say amen? We love talent shows. But we tend to bury it. Can you get, amen, can you pioneer something that would help your congregation? A new step in obedience, probably pioneer in obedience, maybe in the area of giving. Maybe there are people here tonight, you've never given a certain amount, like what Pastor Campbell was saying, and you step out and give above and beyond that you've never done. How many of you know you just pioneered something in giving? You just stepped out. So pioneering is not limited only to a church. Within the congregation, you fill the blanks. Many of us, we pioneer. We do things for the first time, amen, in our life. John the Baptist, how many of you know he pioneered in the desert? How many of you want to pioneer in the desert? Oh, Pastor, how many people are there? He's pioneering in the desert. What an awkward place to pioneer. Bible says people all over the desert came to him. He was forced to rely on God. He was pre preaching the baptism of repentance, turning from sin. People were pouring in. Here's a man did not, amen, look at, uh, uh, amen, um, all the logistics, uh, stepped out relying on God disciples forced to pioneer of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross, resurrected, amen, ascended, and then Jesus told them, you will take the gospel first to Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the ends of the world, and amen, they had to rely on God's promise. How many of you know as pioneers we are called to rely on God and step into new territories? Can I tell you there are there are territories that, amen, where people still do not know about Jesus Christ. Oh, what pastor, there are churches. India is filled with churches. Listen to me. It is filled with probably religion. Just having a church in a city doesn't mean, amen, that the gospel is being preached. I can tell you a number of them where the gospel is not being preached. Paul pioneered the Gentiles. Handpicked by God to do an important work. But may I remind you something this morning, church? Jesus Christ pioneered it all. I mean, you know, Jesus was a pioneer himself. What we are part of today. Oh, was Jesus a pioneer? Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 2, the NIV version says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, what? The pioneer, that word, and the perfecter of the faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus ministered in the short three years that he, amen, started to minister. Scholars say there were close to 26 areas, different spots that he impacted. Can I ask you a question this morning? How many areas have you impacted last week, last year? Three years, 26 different places that Jesus ministered and bought the gospel. He was a pioneer. This conference week, we're already in the last day. God probably has already laid upon your heart new areas to step up. Whichever area it may be, challenging you to new areas to pioneer. There are young couples here. Can God challenge you to go? There are established pastors here. Can you leave, amen, 
your established comfortable zones and step up to an unknown place singles here will you start putting your life in order where one day you can step into your destiny because listen I was speaking as we were even traveling last night in the car pastor Mitchell made a statement if we're if this is what we're going to do to reach you it's not going to be because of any other program or whatever it's going to be through people who are going to pioneer people are going to step out and do something let's never forget amen we are not going to reach the nation of India amen by having uh, uh, all these programs and orphanages we need men and women who will go to new territories How many of you know our fellowship is a pioneering fellowship? Amen. I'm so glad I'm part of this. It's a distinctive. The distinctive. If you're a pioneering fellowship, because you know what? Everything that we do is totally dependent on God. It's not dependent on man. Many people have pioneered in our fellowship. There are missionaries here. Amen. You've pioneered. Amen. You are pioneering. There are others you are. Amen. Locals you are pioneering. Because how many of you know? As the pioneers, when you start something from scratch, you are totally dependent on God. Because it's not man, it's God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. But God chose the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And he chose the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing that the things that are can I tell you we are a pioneering people how many of you can say amen on a fellowship as a whole even you bring it down to your local church amen we are a pioneering people we are constantly looking at different avenues where we can bring the gospel a new way listen we don't change the gospel but we can present it in different ways this is why we do haunted houses uh, or we do our judgment play even in this very venue uh, amen uh, some years back the Coxtown Church and the Bangalore churches we did the judgment heaven's gates and hell's flames uh, powerful to see my my father amen uh, he rededicated his life at this very altar years living in religion but bowed his knee he said I've never seen a graphic depiction like heaven's gates and hell's flame like this drama because listen to me gospel not doesn't change but we are looking at new avenues we did uh, Michael Jackson night in, Co in Coxtown we didn't give Michael Jackson all the glory we said even the king of pops needs the king of kings Elvis Presley, Beatles and everything because listen, there's nothing wrong in trying new ideas as long as you don't mess with the gospel. Talk about Michael Jackson, the light goes off, eh? We look at new ways from a pastor to a disciple to the faithful saint in the congregation. How many of you know the pioneering spirit needs to be alive in our churches? Pastor, can I encourage you? A pioneering spirit should be established in our congregation. What spirit is in your church this morning? What spirit are you establishing in your church? Fear, unknown, it's going to be hard. What spirit do you put out, pastor? Because eventually, if pioneers are going to raise up in a local church, it starts from the leader pastor the local pastor it's your heart do you have a pioneering spirit this morning it's in our history of our fellowship can I tell you pioneering is our living vision how many of you know there are some visions that are dead but in our fellowship thank God pioneering is a living vision we have number of conferences not just in India across the nations of the world on an every Friday night or a Thursday night there are people that will be lined up on the stage ready to go to unknown territories totally relying on God this is a living vision let's be real pioneering was not man's idea pioneering was God's idea how many of you can say amen secondly I want to see on losing this pioneering spirit pastor can we lose this spirit listen to me very carefully hell rages against the pioneering spirit did you know hell comes against this you know why 
Because pioneering is all about having an evangelical edge. Having a Pentecostal edge. Years back, we had a lady in our church. She said, Pastor, I'm leaving your church. I said, I said what's the problem, dear? She said, there's too much of evangelism in your church. Oh, you, you, you certainly don't fit here. Because pioneering has an evangelical edge. Acts chapter 1, the power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall, be my, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria unto the ends of the world. What is God saying here? What is Jesus saying? He's instructing, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are going to have power to do my will. When did this happen? On the day of Pentecost, church, that is the reason we are Pentecostals. How many of you can say amen? We are Pentecostals here. It's good to make some sound. How many of you can say amen? Shh. Because some churches, are, shh. Why do they whistle in the church? Well, you kept whistling at women, amen, when you were, uh, amen, I were stinking perverts. And when you get saved, amen, we cannot uh, encourage, uh, amen, we cannot uh, make a sound for God. Amen. Pentecostal. Listen, I believe in Pentecostalism. How many of you can say amen? I believe in the Holy Spirit baptism. I believe in speaking of tongues. Let no one tell you, speak tongues slowly. There's nothing called putting a muffler for tongues. Put a silencer. If I were you, I would let it rip. Let it rip, my friend. Pentecostalism, amen, pioneering spirit is having an evangelistic edge. That word witness, Jesus says, is an idea of being a martyr. Someone who's going to lay their life down for the gospel. You read the Fox's book of martyrs, you'll be surprised how many people today, you and I sit with this Bible in our hands, not knowing the value that people have laid down their lives so that you can read this book. And yet this is the least read book. This may be the most printed and circulated book. Reality is the least read book. Just having a Bible in your house doesn't mean you're a Christian. As if you go to KFC, you become a chicken. Pioneering spirits about enduring persecution, opposition, resistance, somewhere even martyred. Pastor Peter Field bought this uh, 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 illustration. Remember Graham Staines from Australia. Him and his family, he, they were martyred here, helping our nation, but eventually the radicals killed them. For what? Preaching about Jesus Christ. 2008, when my wife and I, we were pioneering in the HBR area, amen. Before we could get into a building, we were, you know, in our home. I remember pastor said, you know, six months, you've got to build in your home, and then we're going to do it. So we started build, amen, uh, pioneering in our house, uh, you know, put, uh, putting the banners up and having people come into your home and all of those. I remember the first day we are out on outreach. My wife and I were driving uh, and the, the first day we are going to outreach this locality. We get into that zone and then I stop the car and I, and I open the driver's door and a guy hits me from the back of the door and he goes flying. <laughs> what a way to start an outreach when you're pioneering. Immediately there's a group of people begin to mob. Listen, right there, you can say, man, there is a mob, but I saw an opportunity. Wow, an accident can bring in so many people. I can start witnessing here, man. You can fake an accident and witness. <laughs> they all begin to come. There was, you know, commotion. Uh, you know, people were going after me and this, that. But listen, God gave me favor right there in that accident. I thought they're going to probably, you know, crucify me. Again. But listen, God gave me favor in that place. I knew that when I am stepping out in new territory, totally relying on God, God is on my side. Pioneer, God is on your side. I remember services where you get death threats. I remember when Pastor Dan Rubianis was here, Louis Labato, Pastor Heimberg, you're all here. We're doing a concert in the rooftop and we had these radicals that were trying to mob us, plan to actually mob us that day and get, into, get us into trouble. We begin to pray. You know how? Because reference points. Years before in Coxtown, we had a mob that began to gather and they were trying to come. I, I saw my pastor then, pastor then, pastor uh, Rubianus, he went into the office and began to call pastor and they prayed over the phone and the mob dispersed. Uh, as a good disciple, I thought about the protocol and I began to go and I was, I got, I, I began to call my pastor, but he was all, you know, I saw, I found out that he was in the concert scene. His phone is ringing, but he's on the concert. So I got alone. I prayed. I said, Lord, you need to give me favor. 
with, by the time I was done with the call, they all walked away. Eventually, I found out there was one guy by the name of Francis, if I'm not wrong, or Xavier. My wife needs to help me later. This man said, Pastor, you know what? When I met him on outreach a few days later, he said, I, dis I, I know what you're doing in this place. Uh, but you know what? I told them, leave them alone. They're doing something good. If at all you ever need any help and having any trouble with these guys, he gave me his card and said, you can contact me and I'll help you. How many of you know that is favor? Pioneering, you've got to endure all of those things. But listen, it's part of life. Jesus says you will receive power. What does he say? Receive power. How do you receive power? Take your finger, put it in the electrical socket, isn't it? No, that's not what it says. Amen. How do you, how does spark fly? Power means something beyond human ability to be able to reach the nations beyond and your city. Pioneering is about going to places you've never seen, meeting people, groups that you've never saw. Amen. In pioneering, I've seen some of the wonderful miracles that I've ever saw. In fact, you pray and said, did, it, did you really get healed? Have you seen people? You pray for, did you, are, are you sure? Because how many of you know it's not your power, it is power beyond human ability. This is why, amen, many people fear to get into pioneering. Listen, you don't need to fear pioneering because it's not going in your power, it's going in his power. That should, that should ease the situation. Hell rages against this spirit. And when you have this spirit, how many of you know it's hard to shut up about Jesus Christ? Have you seen people who are always talking about Jesus Christ? We, you know, we always talk about something else. But listen, let's be profitable. Let's talk about JC. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. When you have that spirit. A pioneering spirit is what helped us as a disciple. The preaching in the congregation. This was the front line of evangelism. I remember, pastor used to say, okay. Where are, you, where are you going to do an outreach? I said this area. For the last three weeks, you've been saying the same place. Go get a map of Bangalore and bring it, put it on the table. Bought the map of Bangalore. Okay, now for the next six months, which spot are you going to do? I begin to scratch my head as an outreach director. Man, I got to... In other words, what he was teaching me, if you're going to be in the front line of evangelism, you've got to be, catch this spirit, I need to see new spots, new areas, new neighborhoods where I can cast the net. See, when the spirit of pioneering resides in you, it's very hard to contain. This is why I so appreciate, amen, uh, Pastor Jesse Cluck. I didn't know he was going to be getting launched in January. I was there in that conference. Uh, because listen, when that spirit, when God's spirit resides in you, it's hard to contain. Uh, and here he is, amen, uh, second round. Because that's a spirit. And I don't even know it's good to hang around with people like that because that is the spirit we need to, amen, get a hold of. Not those, amen, who put a wet blanket on you. Can you be very careful with Mr. and Mrs. Wet Blanket? Can you get stirred this week for the possibility as I quickly wind this down? Because how does the enemy attack this spirit? I have seen this transpire. This is one of my agony and my, amen, one of my greatest, uh, amen, uh, prayer is that God would raise the pioneers in this place. How does the enemy attack this pioneering spirit? In a person and a congregation. Number one, he always attacks it through bad reports. In our text, amen, Caleb and Joshua. Remember what they, the spies came back, amen. And what did Caleb and Joshua do? They bought a good report, but their report was against how many? Ten spies. What report? Bad report. Eventually, it was not the ten spies, it was Joshua and Caleb versus the whole nation. We are like grasshoppers. It is hard. You don't have a chance. This, that, the other. And, uh, you know, people will start to bring in bad reports. May I challenge those that are, amen, here tonight. Someone who has a desire to step out something for God, don't be the one who's bringing the bad report to those people. So interesting when a new convert will rise up, amen, in your church or whatever, and the older saints are always, ah, I know, man, chill out, cool. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, pastor, people are getting saved. God's spirit is here. Revival is coming. Ten years I've been here, I'm watching when the revival will come. 
bad reports. Believer, what report do you give? Pastor, what report do you give about your city? Because you get calloused and hard when you start hearing bad reports. Caleb is against this report. Listen, that is religion. Listen to me, that's religion at its very best. This is why, you see, the Sadducees were like that. You know why they were called Sadducees? Because they were sad, you see. They had a form of godliness, but they did not believe in the supernatural power. Amen. Because when you don't believe in the supernatural power, you will be sad, you see. When they heard that Jesus was doing this mighty miracle and that mighty miracle, they did not believe. They probably, what did they say? He's full of demons. He's controlling. That's why. When you hear great reports of the miracle that God is doing, believer, disciple, pastor, what do you go back and talk about that report? Yeah, 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 I know. You know this, 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 this. When God is at work, as I preached, amen, Tuesday night, be careful what you speak about the church because you're not speaking about just the church. You're speaking about God's bride. And God, amen, gets serious when you talk something about his bride. Killing the spirit in a new convert is deadly. I pray that, amen, people will rally and encourage the new converts. Do it, man. I'm behind you. How do you handle success when somebody rises up in ministry? They want to pioneer. Oh, you want to play? Okay, go play. Oh, I've played so many times. In a few more days, you'll come down and sit next to me. No problem. Killing that spirit is deadly. What about an older convert? Amen. Who's gone through issues and now he's renewing that spirit and God has done the work and then comes the bad reports. Oh, you tried this before, isn't it? Why do you want to get in the same trouble again and again? It's not worth it. Just sit down. Sit in the back lines. Relax. Other people will do it. Don't worry. Why do you stress out? Be careful. Bad reports can kill that spirit. You heard Neil's testimony. And as I took over him, and he understands, I've shared this about him many times, and even in our congregation. He, I, I, I remember when he walked into church, Neil with his red Bible, never forget him. Young, walked in, God was doing miracles, mighty things in his life. I came a season in his life, things begin to happen. And along the way, things begin to be spoken, people begin to speak words, things into his, and the struggles. I saw him, amen. You know, when he was struggling. I saw him and he used to battle. My wife and I, we used to pray and lay hold of God. There are times I go back to my house and I would weep. My wife knows, say, Lord, touch this man. He has great potential. Thank God, amen. God reversed that, amen. And today he's here. He's serving God, amen. In the middle of God's will for his life. You know why? I look back, it's bad reports. Bad reports spoken about kingdom, about church leadership. Be careful what you speak, what reports you say. Secondly is when you're complacent. Complacency will kill this spirit. Oh, I'm good enough. This is enough. You're already pastoring probably. Pastor, you can never say this is enough. The day you say this is enough, that spirit is dead. We've arrived. We've done this on an average, what, 30, 40 people right in every church. I've also reached 40, so I think I'm good. No. No. Reality is, how many of you know there's always work to be done? There's a lot of souls, amen, to be won. One thing I love about our pastors and our leaders here, they are never settled. I'm not saying in a bad way, but I'm saying 2,300 churches, some denominations or amen fellowship would say, I think we have achieved. But yet we always hear from our leaders, there is still yet work to be done. That we are not complacent. Reuben and Gad decided, amen, they're not going to cross into the promised land. We can stay here. We are fine. Listen to me when you get comfortable, secure. I don't want to risk. This will happen. There are times, people, you've got to risk your life. Pioneering is all about risking. Not just in churches, but in every other area I was talking about. Pastors, sometimes you've got to risk it and go to a different place. Turn over, raise up disciples. The reason, amen, you're not able to turn over is because there are no disciples that can take over. 
That when discipleship kicks in, the ability to, amen, move on and reach into the regions beyond comes into picture. The rich young ruler, what happened? He came with a desire to do the work of God. But what happened? He was not ready to surrender all of his securities in life. He thought, I am good wherever I am. I can make it here. I am fine. Listen, that will choke the spirit of pioneering. When we all settle down and say, where I am, I am fine. How many of you know God is good at ruffling the nest? God is good at that. He can make us uncomfortable. Amen. Probably this week, even maybe this week, God has been pushing you. You feel uncomfortable. Amen. It's not gastrics. Amen. You're not having gas. Amen. It's the God's presence dealing with you. The other thing that will kill a pioneering spirit is being uncertain. How many of you know Israel are going towards the promised land? With what they were going in the promised land? Only God's covenant. That's all they had. God's plan and promise. What's the guarantee that God's going to help us? He spoke it. How many of you know God speaks and it remains? God has spoken into the nations and it remains. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Tragedy is many Christians today, the word of God is not enough for them. What a sad thing today. People are not enough with the word of God. They need more specifics details of everything how many of you know god many times may not give us details god if you just send me a text message i'll be fine you just tweet me pastor give me instructions everything how to do no sometimes all you need is a word and we've got to do it calling the issue of calling is something that can snub pioneering spirit pastor how is that possible i can tell you right now i've spoken to people personally and the first thing they always say fellowship it's a fellowship word calling is a fellowship word pastor i'm not called to be a pioneer i've heard people say that i'm not called pioneering is not my calling may i remind you who went to the promised land the 12 spies moses no the bible says an entire nation left egypt they were all going to go, the mass exodus, that they were going to enter into this new promised land. The enemy somehow tries to, amen, dis tweak our minds and twist our minds towards this and thinking that pioneering is only for a certain number of people. Reality, there are people here tonight, every one of us are called to pioneer. Either in the calling of, amen, pastoring or in different areas of pioneering. Peter, what did Jesus say to Peter? Launch into the deep. Peter's frustrated. Oh, it's not for me. I've tried all day. Oh, launch into the deep. No, pastor. No, it's not for me. Eventually he did. And you and I know that he caught a great catch. This is where many people withdraw on pioneering. We think it's a lot of work when God is trying to take you to the next level there are people here tonight this is your desire i want to go to the next level listen to me the pioneering spirit will always take you to the next level i close this morning so how can you gain a pioneering spirit in our text the entire nation there are only three people who had a pioneering spirit moses joshua and caleb they saw the potential of what god could accomplish do you see the potential of what God could accomplish I'm sitting here I can see what God can do we are driving and we can see the potential of what God could do what do you see oh I see garbage everywhere okay that's what you see I see pollution okay that's what you see but do you see souls do you see people groups do you see neighborhoods that are rich for the harvest? Do you see these young people with their earphones? Do you see call centers? Do you see the latest, amen, uh, 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 this young generation that God has given? Listen, our nation is ripe with young people. Our nations are filled with probabilities. Jesus points this reality to us because people have lost this today. Luke 10, 12, he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of harvest will send out the laborers. Disciple, pastor, do you have a pioneering spirit? If you've lost it, you can get it. For those who do not have it, you can gain a pioneering spirit. Three things to do to gain a pioneering 
spirit quickly. Number one, you need to always ask for God. How many of you know the Bible says you have not because you ask not? You've got to ask to God. Anything we lack, we can come to God in prayer. James says every good gift comes from God above. A good start to get an evangelical edge, a good start to get a pioneering spirit edge will be those that are filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you can say amen? Can I tell you, amen, pastors here tonight, amen, prepare them, should be filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot, they may have the talents, the charisma, and all of that, but they will fail. But listen, they need to have the Holy Spirit edge in their life. Is he speaking in tongues? Does he move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Amen. That is necessary. I'm not talking about, amen, the one time Shandala Robos, amen. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit having monopoly over your life. That Holy Spirit ministers to you in every area. So you need to ask. Secondly, seizing opportunities one is asking god two is to look at opportunities one thing i have learned in my short amen years living for god i've recognized when god moves i move when i'm stirred i will move into action so many people say oh pastor i was so stirred yeah you were so stirred you didn't even make it to the altar Now we stay comfortable, even though there is place at the altar. The altar is a place where you can make covenant with God. Think of new place, seizing the opportunities. I was vexed in HBR layout when I said, Lord, give me new thinking. And I remember, I saw one, one outreach. I just put a small cricket video. Many know this testimony. A simple cricket video, just few minutes before the outreach, 200 plus people gathered. How did that happen? Because you've got to look and seize for opportunities. There are a number of you, you've tried that and God has given you those nuggets to get those people. I mean, you know, things in our fellowship, everything did not come from our leaders, Pastor Mitchell or Pastor Campbell. The local churches that were looking for the need and seize the opportunities and that has gone across and we also, amen, do what we see in the fellowship. Thirdly, not only do you ask God and seize opportunities, this is where I want you to be mindful, you need to help others. I've gone to help others and God has sparked something in my heart. How many of you know we are a fellowship? We help each other. Churches, if you're indigenous, you are not independent. We are connected as a fellowship. Amen. We are helping each other. Caleb, in verse number 24, my servant Caleb has a different spirit in him and he has followed me Fully. It is a linking of hearts together, and that is what uh, they did. This spirit is what helped Caleb to be in the desert for 40 years. And then at the age of 50, he's saying, God, give me this mountain. Age of 115, he's slaying the giants. This is what, amen, helps our leaders. I picked up Pastor Mitchell, amen, in the airport earlier, 2 in the morning. He was walking faster than me. I got to catch up. Most people at his age and the leaders of our fellowship would retire by 60. They're all, some of you are already retired at 35. That's a different situation. Amen. We'll preach a different service. But I'm talking still going. How many of you know it's in our leaders? The spirit is there. When you involve yourself in this, God will help you. I pray God restore a pioneering spirit here. A pioneer's edge, a vision for what God could do. Pioneer, pastor. You've got to be dependent on God. One thing I found in pioneering morning prayer is absolutely critical. God, give me the direction for this day. Just because our pastors are not seeing us, how many of you know we don't skip things? It's like the cat closes its eyes and thinks the whole world is dark. No, there's a God above who sees. We have faithful prayer is critical. Will you launch into the deep? There are couples here. Can you be challenged to go this week? Still have time, amen. A new church, can you pioneer that? For some of you, it may not be a new church, but in your local congregation, you can pioneer something. You can start something that will be a blessing to enlarge God's kingdom. Will you do that? Caleb had that spirit. Joshua was the leader, but Caleb was the support role. He had that spirit. Disciple, can you have that spirit? Pastor, can you have that spirit as a whole? Let's amen. Lay a hold of God. What spirit do you have this morning? Caleb had a different spirit. 
What spirit is in your church? I always challenge our people, let's do something for God. Let's try something new. Step up, raise up. And I believe God is going to give us the nations of the world. But let's have, amen, the spirit that is established, a spirit of a pioneer. I love, I, I named my son Caleb after that. Not after fireproof, just want to clear that, amen. Not after fireproof, Caleb, because he was handsome, because the spirit behind the Bible, amen, uh, character, that he was a man who had a pioneering spirit. Uh, amen. Let's have that. That's all I have. Let's welcome Pastor, amen, Mitchell as he comes uh, this morning. Let's give him a warm welcome, amen.